Good afternoon, team. Um, <clears throat> still learning this tech, so <laughs> uh, yeah, it's all good. It's all good. It's fun. How's everybody's lockdown doing? Um, man, it's such a nice sunny day out there. I bet that there's a lot of things that we'd rather be doing, but I think um, you know, been looking around and doing a lot of research on this, and it's it's really one of those times where it generally is for the greater good, and we've got to remember uh, about our parents and and um, even their grandparents and all the rest of it, and just realize that um, as much as we want to have our own liberties right now, it's it's for them uh, at, the, at the ultimate. And you know, we're going into a, a very different uh, a very different world. There's going to be coming out of lockdown. There's going to be some some changes the way we travel, the way we communicate, the way we do business. Um, so today I've got Tibor Tibor Macker with us, a bit of business strategies as business and. We're going to have a little chat about uh, essential services, but I think uh, just to start, I'll just say welcome, Steve Wall. Yeah, thank you, Nick. Appreciate the invite. Yeah, yeah. Look, I know you uh, uh, do a lot to support uh, people within this group already. Um, seen your name recommended many, many, many times over. And so do you want to give us a little bit of a, you know, a bit about you, a bit of a history and synopsis and, and, and just, yeah, go from there. Yeah, well, um, I'm, I'm a Kiwi with a South African accent. Uh, so I moved here 21 years ago and uh, ca came from the chartered accountancy industry. And um, probably about, well, I guess part of my whole uh, working life, I've been in a business advisory type role. And it was a natural progression to uh, step into business coaching around uh, 2006, 2007. And uh, yeah, have been doing a business coaching side of my business uh, pretty much uh, since then. And helps many business owners and or people just in general, um, just thinking about why they're in business, what is it that they want to achieve and actually help them put a plan in place to actually make it uh, happen. Mm, mm, mm. And so I um, imagine last week a lot of that's uh, probably been flipped upside down on you. Oh, very much so. Yes, my business has uh, taken a, quite a knock because a lot of the businesses that I have been helped helping as such, they got hit very badly too because uh, suddenly their income all dried up as well. So, uh, yeah, there's, um, mm, mm. it makes it very hard on everybody. A big on-flow effect, isn't it? And oh, totally. I think we're only just really, really seeing the start of all of that, how it's going to play out. Um, so I think we've just got to hold on. And, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I have... From the retail sector and and like i mean there's there's no work you know <laughs> not quite right and those yeah. and those businesses uh you know have have a significant challenge coming up uh you know it's all good and well to uh, pay the wage subsidy as such and it's fantastic that the government has taken that step but there's got to be a significant a significant additional um boost that the government needs to put in place to help every single business uh, to to basically either stay alive and or create an opportunity for people to add to the growth of, of New Zealand going forward. Because right now, many small businesses uh, are tied up with um, leases. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, it's, uh, uh, if, if you don't have income coming in, like I said, it's all good for the uh, wage subsidy, but uh, you still have all the other expenses to pay for. And if you can't pay for the rent, well, the next people to uh, suffer down there are the landlords right. of, of all of these various, and all of these guys have got um, loans with the banks. You know, we, we're talking about several million dollars per item potentially, mm -hmm. you know, per um, block. And that, that on-flow effect, I think, is the one that's, that's going to be the hardest to um, overcome in the coming months. Yeah, uh, Jamie mentioned on, on Thursday that he thinks that some some will come back quickly, service-based, particularly, you know, places like, you know, your hairdressers, your, your those types of uh, industries. Absolutely. We still need our haircuts. We still need uh, some, some basic uh, things around ourselves. So, yes, those, those people will still, uh, um, you know, see a, see a pickup. But the problem, though, is you've got to understand, you know, ha hairdressing and, um, you know, potentially buying clothes in boutique stores and that are all going to be subject to the fact that if people have reduced incomes from whatever source, mm -hmm. they don't have the disposable income to go and uh, um, spend on, on these various 
well, if you can call them extravagances, <laughs> here is not necessarily an extravagant, but uh, um, mm, it's, mm. it's uh, you know, it's, it's, you could end up with, um, uh, there was a picture meme on, on Facebook somewhere along the line with the 1970s, 1960s haircuts that parents did on their kids. Uh, <laughs> and that... Yeah. The ball. <laughs> yeah, quite right. That's right. That's, uh, that's, that's the type of thing that uh, potentially could come, come going forward. And, you know, if, if, if people, well, people won't really recognize this, but if you've read about, up about the 1930s uh, depression, those are the types of measures that were, were taken back then. Mm -hmm. You know, all these, I guess, essential, well, not essential, but necessary things in your life might not be as necessary as we think they are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, okay, and, and it's, you know, it's going to be an interesting recovery, that's, that's for sure. Oh, very much so. Yep. So... The essential services, obviously, there's um, there's there's a um, this is quite a big topic when you really think about it. There's there's people saying, well, my business should be. There's people saying, well, you know, um, how do I how do I know if I am or not? Um, I think like, like probably the the point about you know why the government's done this. Do you want to give us a little bit of an expansion on that? Yeah. So COVID nineteen is a uh, Transmission, transmissible uh, disease, basically, or not a disease, it's an infection. Um, and, and it's transferred basically by either human contact or the um, uh, spreading of mucus uh, in the way of a cough, cough or a, a sneeze as such. And because we are a, a species that like to get together and uh, interact as often as we can, uh, the, the transmission as shown overseas, you know, you just have to look at the likes of Italy. Italy when they initially were told about it, the, uh, most Italians just said, ah, don't worry about it, you know, we'll, 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 we'll get through this. But when the body started stacking up, uh, mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. took some seriously drastic action, which the rest of the world effectively started copying after China, of course. They were the first to subject their people. But because they're, a, a, I guess, a communist system where they have the right to shut everybody down, they clearly showed that they, they were fixing, being right? harsh... Yeah, they were first, um, but but they could enforce it because of their uh, uh, governance system. But when you go to the Western countries where we're democracies as such, you know, to, to cut off people's liberties like that would be uh, an outcry. But mm. it needed, mm. I guess it didn't need, but yeah, unfortunately it is the way that it happened. It needed number of deaths to start happening for people to suddenly wake up and say, oh, hang on, maybe this is a little Take bit worse than the normal yeah. flu. Yeah, yeah. And that's where Italy uh, clamped down far too late, uh, and uh, as has many others. And I think the USA is another one that's clamped down far too late because I think that theirs is just oh, starting that, to theirs is up. just only starting, yeah. Correct, correct. So uh, you know, while these are very extreme measures that were taken in this country, uh, and and it's going to hit our economy like 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 there's no tomorrow. Um, if we want to keep people safe, which is the key thing that, that the government wants to do is to try and save lives. I mean, what is the number today? 400 and something uh, yeah. um, infected people with two in ICU um, with no deaths yet. I think we're still doing pretty well. Uh, and, and yes, we, we might still have a few more days of uh, high in numbers, but I, I believe that with this type of setup and as long as people stick to the basics of the shutdown, um, we, sh we should see you know, hopefully that within four weeks, the, this will all be over. So, so essentially, the, the government's uh, gone through and, and, and created a checklist of businesses that absolutely, without, without a shadow of a doubt, the country can't function without? Yes, correct. So one of the key things is we, we're all accustomed to a basic style of living, and we're accustomed to having electricity. We're accustomed to, uh, you know, just driving down to the shops, buying our foodstuffs. Uh, getting petrol, all that type of stuff. So what the government is uh, trying to do is, is try and retain some sense of normality within our normal lives and getting whatever we need, except for the fact that, you know, we, we need to be separate as, as much as possible. So, you know, the basics of food, medicine, healthcare, energy, fuel, waste removal, internet, and financial support will continue to be available uh, mm -hmm. within the country. But that gets broken down further and further as you go down the, the list of sectors that are allowed to still uh, operate as such. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there was a, just before I came online, there was a comment about from someone saying that there's still a lot of cars on, on the motorway. 
Well, yes, if you have a look at the various sectors that are still allowed to operate based on the MBIE website, um, there would still be a significant number of people technically working. Yeah, my, my um, one of the guys that lives here with us is a, is a postie, and um, so he's oh, he's right. he's out, he's doing his regular regular runs on the days, and he's he actually said he commented last, he goes, man, I don't even know why I bother indicating anymore because <laughs> 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 there's yeah. no one on the road, you know. Um, but right. but obviously people are seeing you know people out and about, and they're going, oh, they're not isolating, and I think that that. Um, Potentially, you know, not helping with the hype and not helping with the fear. So, if we yeah, can well, highlight I, I, the understanding. I guess, you know, yeah, if, if you take a postie and, and doing their rounds, they're unlikely to come into contact with people unless somebody's waiting at their post box uh, for the delivery. But, uh, you know, there's, there's unlikely to be any spreading of, of, of this disease. And um, the, the key around the whole shut lockdown is to try and keep people from interacting too much so um there was a diagram put up on on tv a couple oh, of weeks or so ago that one that, that yeah that's right so yeah. you just imagine you know nick you you go uh, uh get the virus and then uh, you go to a barbecue and then you go to a networking meeting and whatever else mm -hmm. and, and how quickly can it spread from there so this that's that's why this is happening but the essential services just to keep us in a, in a relative style of, um, I guess, luxury, if you want to call it, um, is, is, is still necessary for us. Mm. You know, this um, accommodation stuff where the uh, government still needs to um, put people into quarantine. Uh, quarantine. So, so several accommodation establishments have been tapped on the shoulder and said, we're going right. to be using you. Mm. So, you know, that's it. Those are the things. There's border security. There's still people coming in. Uh, uh, and, 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 and moving around uh, that, that, that need to uh, be, be checked, but also parcels and stuff. So all parcels and all uh, shipping from overseas is still t uh, technically happening. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, we, we need to keep our food supplies and everything going. Courts and tribunals, although they've been reduced significantly, um, they, they're such a backlog, they, they couldn't really stop them. So that's still happening. Uh, education, well, we all know that that's just shut down. Uh, yeah, but there are um, uh, teachers still working in, in uh, online delivery. So technically, yeah. they are still working. Uh, fast yeah, I think that, that one was the, the online one was a, a big area of confusion for uh, a lot of small, smaller players that, you know, perhaps just work from home and they just want to send their goods out. Um, I don't know if there's been any more definition on that yet. No, so um, all non-essential stuff uh, um, technically cannot be moved by delivery uh, people. But you know, if you've got medicines that need to be delivered, or um, I, I'm not 100% sure whether vitamins fall under the healthcare mm -hmm. setup, but they should. Um, but yeah, uh, so those those types of businesses should be open. Um, I haven't seen anything specifically around that, but they just talk about medicines in in general. Yeah, I had some um, um, some supplements turn up, some you know protein and that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. yeah, so so that is still regarded as that. Then, of course, the other one is the fast uh, FMCG uh, group, the fast moving consumer goods. Um, supermarkets. All, um, yeah, you know, supermarkets and stuff. Financial services, and this was interesting. So it's um, the financial services that are still opening is banking services, the stock exchange, broking services, payment and settlement systems, funds management. Uh, and insurance services uh, and financial advice. So, you know, those are still um, sectors that, that, that are working. So if you take the, the number of people that work in those, they are, they are still technically working. Although a lot of those businesses can work from home, mm -hmm. but uh, un under the current guidelines, they can still go to an office. All right, okay. So, you know, there are, there are rules around that, though. You know, you've got to now, instead of having a little cubicle next to each other, you've got to be able to sit two meters apart. Mm -hmm. That's why a lot of those types of businesses have all moved uh, home and set up home offices. That kind of makes sense. And it makes the commute a whole bunch easier, too, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, yeah. And then, then, then the whole um, health uh, sector, of course, you know, they, they have to be on alert all the time. So, you know, there's, there's nobody there that's uh, been told to stay at home. The only people that are potentially at home are potentially da data entry people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a friend of mine is actually a nurse down at one of the hospitals. Um, yeah, little, little, 
I guess concerned about going to work, but knows she's got a job to do. Um, yeah. Yeah. Tough one. Yeah, and and unfortunately, you know, if you look at the statistics overseas. Um, the uh, health workers on, on the front line are, are one of the most severely affected um, at risk. Uh, job at, at high risk, yes, correct. Yeah. So. Hey, there was one question that's come through, Tibor. Um, it's kind of sure. a bit of a segue, but I thought we, we might answer it. It's from a guy called Reese. He just said, hey, look, is there any indication or estimate that we know of, of how many small businesses will not cover from the, recover from the COVID-19 situation? <laughs> At this stage, I, I couldn't comment. Um, yeah. I, all I know is that there's going to be a hell of a lot. Yeah, I don't think that there, there's been any real projections put out uh, through the government websites from what I can see. Um, but yeah, I think it's it's just one of these ones where at the moment, the small business got to do everything they can to pivot and, and yes. stay alive somehow. Yeah. Mm. Try, try, and, try and find a different uh, way to deliver the either the, the service. If you're selling products, you know, potentially that, that can come back relatively quickly. But once again, as I said earlier, that depends on the disposable income of your, of your market that you've been trying to uh, sell into. So, uh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Then local and national government, of course, they're, they all need to be uh, um, running most of their services, except for, you know, once again, there are office-based uh, um, uh, roles here where, where uh, you know, the local government uh, council and so forth have all said, rather work from home, but you still have to have people out on uh, the, the streets on, with mm. certain of, the, of their roles. Public safety and national security, well, they obviously can roam about and check up on us. Um, the science people, so these are specifically designed around, um, you know, ESR, GNS, GeoNet, NIWA, et cetera, all of those types of uh, um, institutions can still work. And mm. they, they still need to feed a lot of information through to the government and, and us, as, uh, I guess. So all of those uh, types of things, laboratories and physical containment level uh, three facilities are, are there to try and find a solution to COVID-19. So they're all working. Social services. So this is important. Um, most of us that are in small business as such uh, might be the time to consider um, becoming a... Um, a member of uh, Ministry of Social Development uh, <laughs> and, and collect whatever you can collect. Uh, yeah, I, know, uh, I mean, we, we've covered wage subsidy early in the week and we're actually going to recover again on Monday because obviously it keeps changing good. and it's, it's our number yeah. one seems to be a uh, hit rate topic. So, um, yeah, it's myself cool. and Sunil, we're, we're, we're doing what we can to, to research yeah. and, and we've got some else helping us do over the weekend. So, yeah. All right, and then transport and, and logistics. So once again, the logistics are around moving um, freight around, uh, specifically food and that type of stuff, and also essential services, uh, you know, like medicines or whatever that need to be dropped off. So, so those those people are still working. Utilities companies um, and including their supply chain. So you know, your electricity, your water, yeah. um, all of those types of services need to keep running. Uh, what I have understood is that a lot of those people uh, are, are on call-out basis. So if something really goes wrong, then they get called out. But those that are working at the front line, in other words, making sure that the water flow or the electricity, you know, where they have to keep monitoring switches. The people in the factories. Um, or the... That's correct. They, they still need to. Um... So um, in, my, in my handout that I've, that I've uh, uh, sent you, Nick, there's a whole, you know, several pages of, of this yeah. stuff. Uh, but, you know, for a couple of updated stuff uh, since uh, the 27th of March, all supermarkets are considered an essential service. Mm. Farmers markets are not considered an essential service, although they should be technically. But once again, that's an area where lots of people congregate and you don't necessarily get that. Yeah, uh, you can't quite have the controls services. that a supermarket can have of the one in, one no, out. And, right. Yeah, yeah, I got you. Yeah. And it's the same with, with dairies. Dairies are open. However, it's a one in, one out uh, policy. And if they breach that, they, they can get show, uh, shut down. Liquor stores are closed, except in under licensing trust areas. Uh, Woohoo! Go uh, West Auckland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, food, food, delivery, uh, food delivery is prohibited. Um, uh, this is uh, all pre cooked meals are, are prohibited. So, you know, the likes of pizzas and whatever mm -hmm. else. However, uh, non-pre-cooked meals and fresh foods, uh, you know, from supermarkets and stuff can be delivered. Um, pest management. Um, so when you have, you know, infestations of some sort or whatever, you can call them out 
um, but the people must ensure that they are safe and a whole heap of things around that. Campgrounds uh, continue to under very strict, strict campgrounds are under strict protocol. So once again, it's distancing. Backpacker accommodation, once again, they need to remodel. I so think they're on lockdown, one, yeah. One. Yeah, well, I... they're not really all uh, locked down. There are several backpackers uh, that, I'm, that I'm aware of that, that have people in them, uh, especially uh, overseas people that are mm -hmm. stuck in the country. Uh, but the uh, policy is now that instead of having three or four people to a room, it's more or less one or two at the most, depending on the size. Uh, furniture moving in general is considered uh, to be essential, but uh, the deadline for domestic travel has been um, extended until yesterday, so that's all gone now. Yep. Uh, and natural healthcare services are considered not, oh, there you go. Yeah, um, which is we've covered. So. It's, yeah, that's right. Cool. So look, what we'll uh, do is we will, I think um, we, we just um, started sort of drag on um, in time yeah. here. So um, we'll definitely, no your, your handout, we're going to uh, make into a Google Doc or something like that and have it on the downloadable from here. And yeah, I think, um, you know, guys, if, you, if you're in this group and, and you're, you're wondering about, um, you know, how to pivot your business, t a wealth of knowledge. He gets recommended probably, I couldn't tell you how many times, um, and he's got an accountancy background. So, you know, Ask questions. We're here to support, and um, yeah, yeah. Anything, anything, any anything you want to close off with, Tibor? Uh, I guess the most important thing is it's about understanding why you're in business and what you want to be able to achieve uh, uh, going forward. The landscape that we're going to emerge into is going to look substantially different. So, how can your product or your service potentially service a new-looking environment? Believe me, what we are used to in business is not going to come back the way that it is that it has been. I think even socially, there's going to be changes. You know. Oh, very much so. Uh, this 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 whole virus uh, thing is going to be uh, uh, substantially different. I think for at least another year and a half. And you know, where we're used to shaking hands and you know having a convivial hug and whatever else, all of that I think is going to be changed in our business lexicon for a for a substantial number of months well it's interesting times so um hey again thank you so much for your time and thank you to everyone who's tuned in and we will catch you tomorrow